Okay. Uh, uh, hello, I'm Hiromasa Nakatsuka in ICR Lab, the University of Tokyo. Today, I would will, I will like to talk my recent paper, Proving Action Like Particles via CMB Polarization, in collaboration with Tomohiro Fujita, Yuto Minami, and Kai Murai. And now, in this talk, I will explain the meanings of this figure. So, let me start. Um, in these days, many theorists and experimentalists are focusing on the non-wind product matter, especially axions. In the paradigm of string axioms, the string theory suggests that the number of axions with broad mass range. The heavier mass, heavier axions can behave as dark matter, and lighter mass, lighter axions can behave as dark energy. So one, one of the promising way to detect axion is axion photon coupling. In this talk, we use the following simple Lagrangian. And phi is an axion or axion like particle in the following. We simply use the mass term of the potential of axion and the axion photon coupling. This coupling actually changes the Maxwell equation of the electromagnetic field and it rotates the polarization angle of the photon. When photon travels over the axion background, its rotation angle, its polarization angle rotates about the rotation angle alpha. This alpha is given by the difference of the axion field value. Since this coupling is a derivative coupling, this rotation angle lo only depends on the initial and final field value of the axions. So to calculate the, to get the axion coupling constant, we need to estimate the rotation angle alpha and the difference of the field value. So experimentally, we need to use some, some source of the polarized photons. We can use a CMB as a polarized photon. Uh, CMB has uh, two kinds of polarization mode. First one is E-mode polarization, and the second one is B-mode polarization. And the action induces the EB correlation in these modes. Uh, in this paper, we simply neglect the small primordial B mode by the gravitational wave. And this polarization rotation and EB correlation is called cosmic variabling. Um, in the following, I will explain the co cosmic variabling in detail. Uh, at the time of Russell scattering, we only have the E mode polarization. And at that time, Axion has some average field value, phi by LSS, and its fluctuation, which depends on the place to place. And the different place, different place corresponds to the different direction of the sky. So this spatial difference of axion fluctuation results in the direction-dependent rotation angle, which is called anisotropic bioluminance, and which is given by this way. And at the observer point, the observer has some axion field value, phi oves. The important point is that the phi oves is usually different from the average field value, since we also have a fluctuation at the observer. So the difference of average field value of the Russell scattered surface and the field value of the observer result in the isotropic rotation of the polarization angle. This isotropic rotation has two components. First one comes from the background dynamics, and the second one comes from the fluctuation as the observer. So in this way, we can relate the axion field value to the rotation one. Now let me analyze the field dynamics in detail. As I said, value fringes come from the background dynamics and the fluctuation as the observer Russell's scattering itself. The background dynamic is simply given by the solving the equation of motion. And dynamics is uh, that the field value behave as uh, almost like constant for the small mass regions at the early stage of the universe. And uh, when after it oscillates, its field value dumps following the scale factor of the universe. And the amplitude of the background motion is given by the energy fraction of the axiom. Uh, in, this in this paper, we simply assume that the maximum allowed parameter of the energy fraction. For lighter mass regions, the mass axion behaves like a dark energy. And for heavier mass regions, uh, the fraction of energy fraction was constrained by about 1% by these papers. 
And for the perturbation, we simply use a quantum fluctuation, filling inflation. And we can relate the amplitude of the fluctuation to the tensor to scalar ratio, like this way. And uh, in the following plot, we use a tensor to scalar ratio into 10 to minus 3, which is in the reach of the future CMV observation. So now we can calculate the signal of the anisotropic rotation and the isotropic rotation from the axiom field values this way. And then, uh, so we cannot distinguish the isotropic rotation comes from the background motion and the phi observation. However, these two are produced through the different dynamics. So we have a very interesting uh, well, so we can che check these, these rotation angles using the following calculations. So now we can check the sensitivity of the coupling constant through the current sensitivity from the Planck and the SPT core. This figure shows the current sensitivity of the coupling constant, and the horizontal line shows the uh, mass of the axiom field. And the different line corresponds to the different sensitivity from the axiom field values. And the red line comes from the fluctuation as the last scattering surface. This, this sensitivity is uh, almost constant, almost plateau along this region, since we use a flat power spectrum. However, around this mass region, the sensitivity dumps because uh, Axion load oscillates during the last scattering surface. And the net rotation angle was averaged and highly damped around this region. The same is true for the purple line, which comes from the background motion of axions. And uh, this background motion loses sensitivity around this region. Since these extremely light, light mass regions, the background do not lower the other potential and its sensitivity is proportional to the mass around this region. And finally, the blue lines comes from the fluctuation as the observer. And uh, the fluctuation, since this blue line comes from the same fluctuation, both sensitivity are almost comparable value. And around these regions, this dead file through sensitivity because the Field value fluctuation of the observer starts oscillating as the observer point. So in this way, we can calculate the sensitivity curve from these three different components of the axiom field. So now, what can we know through the cosmic value fringes? In the following, let me consider three cases. What if we detect the anisotropic value fringes come from this one? and uh, only isotropic value fringes from this one, but no isotropic value fringes. And finally, we estimate the case that we can detect only anisotropic value fringes, but no isotropic value fringes. So let me see one by one. And uh, in the first case, we consider the case that we only detect the anisotropic value fringes come from the fluctuation as the last scattering surface. Since this fluctuation comes from the inflationary scale, we can fix the coupling constant times the tensor to scale ratio in this way. And the left-handed side was decided by the observations. And right-handed side, the coupling constant actually has an upper bound from other experiment. So we can solve this equation for the tensor to scale ratio. And we can have the lower bound of the tensor square ratio. It is very interesting because similar experiment can investigate tensor to scale ratio from below by value fringes, defined from the from above by primordial gravitational wave. And next, let me consider the case, what if we detect the only isotropic value fringes, the background motion or fluctuation of those other, and no anisotropic value fringes. The no detection of anisotropic, anisotropic value ranges means this isotropic value ranges comes from the background motion. Since uh, this anisotropic value ranges and this fraction would have the same com comparable contribution, 
And uh, the non-detection of this one result in that uh, the isotopic rotation comes from the background motion. And uh, again, the coupling constant has upper bound. We can put the uh, length constraint on the mass range like this. This range corresponds to the purple region in this figure. And uh, other than this purple region, the existence of the axiom was al already excluded by other experiments. So we can investigate the mass of the extremely light axioms using bilifring. So finally, let me consider the case that what if we detect the only anisotropic bilifringes, this one, and no, no isotropic bilifringes. The non-detection of the fluctuation of the observer means that the mass is larger than the current Hubble constant. This corresponds to the orange region in this figure. If axiom mass is very small, the fluctuation at the observer and Russell scattering surface would also have the comp comparable contribution around this. However, now we do not observe the observation, so the fluctuation of the observer is already dumped around this region. And uh, non-detection of background motion means that the background axiom has very small energy fraction. Around these regions, we plot this purple line, assuming the energy fraction is zero, one, about 1%. One However, if we cannot detect the background motion, the energy fraction should be smaller than this value. Then we can calculate the constraint on the, uh, on the energy fraction of the action like this way. Then we can put the stringent constraint on the energy fraction of the action through cosmic value ranges. Now, uh, let me mention to the future sensitivity. This table is, uh, is uh, in our paper, and uh, the future simile experiment will improve the sensitivity of cosmic bilateral ranges by like this way. And, uh, okay, let me summarize this talk. The simile experiments can investigate the cosmic bilateral ranges and the broad range of axiom photocoupling including the dark energy axiom and the axiom with a tiny energy fraction. And once we detect the cosmic bilifringes, which provides a variable information, for example, lower bound of the tensor to scalar ratio or stringent constraint on the energy fraction. So if you're interested in this talk, please visit, to, please visit and read my paper. So this is the end of the talk. Thank you for listening.